Here's a Pioneer model SX34 vacuum tube based uh, stereo receiver slash amplifier from the mid 1960s. It contains an AM FM tuner as well as an amplifier that can be used with a turntable or tape recorder or other auxiliary source. About 10 years ago I fixed this for a friend of mine uh, replaced some leaky coupling capacitors in the audio output stage and he's been using it all these years and now it's developed a some noise in the left channel I don't know if the camera will pick this up sometimes it's a little worse than others but he listens to this through headphones a good bit and he says that noise is rather disturbing so we need to try to uh, solve that problem also replaced some more leaky coupling capacitors and bypass capacitors as the case may be it actually works pretty good except for that little bit of little bit of background noise On Highway 39 North. You don't want to miss this. Purchase an MSRP plus dealer. Now just stuck at the football factory and check. The VNO School Kiss 104.1 music from Patrice Russian. Forget me not. It's casual hanging out with you. Got something you want to hear? You know you got to give me a call. 601 483 Kiss. Don't forget coming up tomorrow. <laughs> And yeah, I bet most of you didn't didn't know that Pioneer actually made a tube receiver. Well, yes, they did make some tube receivers in the mid 1960s. There's the noise. It seems to be coming through a little bit better now. Really not noticing anything on the other channel. The owner also said something about uh, there was a little smokeification here along with some along with some sparks, which I've yet to figure out what that's all about. I can't find any evidence of anything that has exploded in here, so I really don't know what's up with that. Now problems like what he's having can be very difficult to track down. Uh, I think the best way to go about this is to use our oscilloscope here and trace back down through the stages and, and until we can see where the uh, noise is disappearing. And then it'll give us kind of an idea about where the uh, noise is originating from. This oscilloscope will give us a visual representation of uh, our electrical signals that are present throughout the set and I think that'll be the best way to handle this but usually in past from past experience these resistors can generate noise as can these old disk capacitors and even tubes can do it but I don't want to start just replacing parts just for the heck of it I want to go about this the correct way and try to determine exactly which part is uh, causing the noise to be introduced into the into the signal path. Okay, thanks to the internet we have a Pioneer schematic diagram for this receiver. Put it under the magnifier here and we're looking at the output stage. Like I said before, I believe I said this uses 6BM8 tubes for the audio output which is actually two tubes in one, a preamp tube and the actual output tube in the same envelope. So I think we'll check on pin one of each 6BM8, which is the input grid or the control grid for the uh, preamp stage, and see if there's any noise there. We'll do that right now. Okay, I have the oscilloscope connected to pin one right here. Volume turned all the way down, and it looks like we have some garbage there. Now I'm turning the volume up, 
Now what you see is the actual music. Volume all the way down, that's the noise. Okay, now I've moved our scope probe to pin 1 of the other 6BM8 in that channel. And you can see with the volume all the way down, we have virtually no problems. Now I've moved over to pin one of the one of the six BM8s on the other channel that's not so noisy and well to the ear it appears to be not noisy but you can see all the junk riding on it. There's our music. Now we'll check pin one of the other six BM8 in the supposed good channel. And you can see very little disturbance there. I'll crank the volume up. Now you can see the music coming through. Okay, so we have noise on pin 1. And we see we have a 2.2 mega ohm resistor to ground. That could be generating some noise. We have this 0 0.02 microfarad coupling cap which I replaced years ago. I suppose that could be the problem, but not likely. And the other end of that capacitor hooks to the, connects to the, uh, what I believe is the volume control. And since you can hear the noise with the volume control all the way down, I'm really inclined to believe the problem is somewhere right in here, either this resistor or this capacitor. Now what I'm going to do, I checked with the oscilloscope on pin 1. Now I'm going to go back and check on the other side of this capacitor and see what's there. Okay, now testing on the other side of that capacitor. And you can still we see we still have garbage there. And looking at the same capacitor on the other channel. You can see we still have that there. So that pretty much rolls out the capacitor. So it pretty much has to be something further back here that's introducing the noise in the circuit. I'm just going to have to trace it back with the oscilloscope and see where the problem is. Okay, here are the 212AX7 driver tubes. I switched them around and confirm that the tubes are not causing the problem. And under closer oral examination, okay, and as I was saying, I did a little bit closer listening test. That channel has a little hiss in it. This channel has some hum in it. That explains the waveform we were getting on the oscilloscope. Okay, I will now check at, play, at pin 6, which is the plate pin of the 12AX7. In this test, we have our function switch set to the auxiliary position because we don't need any signal screwing up the test. Okay, pin 6. As you can see, we have some junk there. Now we'll move to pin 6, the plate pin of the other 12AX7 for the other channel and compare readings. And you can see there's something there, but it doesn't appear to be as bad as this right here. There's obviously something wrong with both channels, but I'm going to battle one channel at a time here. I think we'll move to the grid of the 12AX7, see what we have there. Now let's look at pin 7, the control grid of the 12AX7. Let's see what we have. Looks clean as a bell. Just for the heck of it, let's flip it back to some music. Optimizing standards of a Mercedes-Benz. Plus, every one is available with an optional extended limited warranty for up to seven seconds or 135,000 total vehicle miles. And now, 
with three months of Sirius XM satellite radio. Someday, I'll stop saying... There's the music. Don't wait. It's time to... Back to the auxiliary position, which is has no signal on it, obviously. Look at that. Look at that. I like that. I think we're zeroing in on our problem. Now let's look at the other channel that had a little bit of hum on it. Look at the control grid of that tube. And look at that. Nothing. So we have no garbage on pin 7, but we have garbage on pin 6, the plate pin. So let's see, what do we have associated with that pin? Here's our plate resistor that provides B plus voltage to the uh, plate. Looks like a 100K ohm. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me a bit in the world if that joker's bad, if that joker's noisy. And then we have this 0 .05 microfarad cap. And then we have our coupling cap here, which appears to be this joker here. And it's an original equipment cap, so it could also be bad. Okay, I'm checking on the other side of this 100K ohm resistor. Okay, what was I about to do? I keep getting interrupted here. Okay, here's the plate resistor for the 12AX7. This is our plate connection. You can see we have a little bit of junk there. Here is the other side of the resistor where the B plus voltage enters into the resistor. There's really no junk there, but the uh, trace on the scope is bouncing around. So I'm going to say right now at this point we've, na we've narrowed it down to possibly this plate resistor or this coupling cap. I'll go ahead and change the resistor first and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so that did absolutely no good. We still have the same little noise in the speaker and the same trash on the oscilloscope. The only thing I can say is this 100k ohm resistor actually measures, well we'll round it up to 107k, so it's pushing the uh, out of tolerance mark, so I guess it was a good thing that we went ahead and replaced it. 110K would be the most we could go here. Okay, back on the Pioneer receiver, I replaced these filter capacitors as well as the rectifier diodes. I read on the internet where these tend to, these older diodes can cause noise. And I can tell by replacing those diodes that the noise level went down a tad bit, but it's still there. And we had an oops moment a little while ago. You may recall me showing you on the oscilloscope the ripple that we had on these two filter capacitors. Well, duh, those two filter capacitors are in the voltage doubler circuit. This, this, as you can see, this unit uses a voltage doubler circuit and there are the two capacitors right there so yes they would have ripple on them now I tested those capacitors and they are they were borderline so it was time to replace them anyway but we're about out of time for this video so we'll just call it a day for now and we will make another video of this and hopefully in part two we'll get all of the all of the problems straightened out Okay, thanks for watching and more to come later.